Hello and welcome. Happy Sabbath. If you're in the United States, it's still Sunday morning. If you're joining us from around the world, I hope that you will uh, comment where you're watching from. I'm going to turn off this light. <laughs> there we go. That was a little too bright. I'm in my basement and um, I am sharing um, a message that I hope will be a support. Wow, what a week it has been. Am I right? Like the world has completely changed in so many ways and there's a lot of fear and anxiety um, that is is being shared right now and that is totally understandable and I want to validate those feelings but my prayer has been to share some messages and thoughts and ideas today that will help us reframe this experience that we're having this faith promoting experience because remember nothing that is happening is an accident or not um, part of the plan and our Heavenly Father is very clear about preparing his children for the second coming and this is part of the curriculum and I really feel like we have an opportunity here as saints to um, learn some important things and to grow closer as families and communities and to uh, grow closer to our Heavenly Father and learn how the voice of the Spirit sounds to us to direct us in our families right now. I don't know if you can see this. I was trying to be um, uh, mindful of, of broadcasting from in my basement so you could see, because we're gonna have our Sunday worship down here and, and it looks like it's reversed, so maybe you can't see it. It says, how do we wanna feel, or how do we want Sunday to feel? And so I want you to be thinking about that as we navigate our different circumstances, wherever we are, we're not attending church together and um, in our normal capacities. And I have been reflecting as the mom and a wife and as a daughter and as a friend, how I can be of a support. And so I'm so grateful for High Five Life that we have decided to create some, some additional support. In addition to our daily faith promoting stories, we are gonna um, be compiling some ideas on how to support around Come Follow Me Better and specifically for Sunday worship in our homes as we are not um, socially gathering like we were a week ago. And so this brought to mind for me a few years ago, I had an opportunity to travel to the Middle East and I'm gonna be very general in my speaking about this. I have not been public about this because of safety and protection for the saints that I met with there. But a few years ago, I was able to travel to the Middle East and to um, speak over a number of days to a large gathering of saints from all over the Middle East. And it was one of the most faith promoting and joyful experiences in my mission that I have had as an opportunity to be a speaker and um, share messages of hope and faith. And so as I, um, I'm gonna put this down just a little bit because I think that's gonna be better. Oh, there we go. So much better, I can sit down. Um, so I've, I learned a lot about um, what I take for granted. And one of the things that I was impressed with were the stories of how saints have been doing home-centered, church-supported gospel instruction for years. And maybe you're watching from a place in the world where this is not new. When they announced Come Follow Me, you were like, yeah, been there, done that. Been doing it for a long, long time. So my first tip and invitation is if you know an expatriate or someone that lives in another country where gathering in church buildings in traditional ways is not the norm for Sunday service and worship, and maybe your Sunday in the Middle East, it's not Sunday, it's Saturday. Saturday is their day of um, worship. And um, so when I was able to meet with these saints and share messages over a few days, I heard amazing stories. And they taught me some amazing things. First of all, how I take my church buildings for granted. How I take sometimes the ease, living in Utah, of getting to the temple. Some of these saints visit the temple once a year. 
in another country. And many of these saints, um, one in particular, a group of saints are a part of a branch where it is the largest branch square miles wide. Um, and the branch president has um, the opportunity to witness the sacrament in 23 different homes. And they all join in on like a Zoom call or a Skype call. And they all join in in witnessing as each location partakes of the sacrament. And then they have a Sunday school meeting together for two hours. And I, when I heard about that, I just thought, what a blessing it is to be able to uh, partake of the sacrament. And it changed how I viewed it each Sunday as I just literally go around the corner to the church that I attend and partake of the sacrament so easily each week. Uh, I also felt from these saints that especially the youth had an understanding of home-centered gospel instruction because they attend schools where they can't talk about their faith or else it would be risky for them. And so um, one of the things that I have felt in anxiety this week is how to best support my kids. I have one child that's in college that lives close by but not in our home and comes home for Sunday dinner. And I have a teenage daughter who obviously wants to be with her friends and prom got canceled this week and all those sporting things and all those gatherings of changes can really trigger in us this kind of fear and anxiety. And so I would like to invite us as a faith community to consider how we want our Sundays to feel and maybe start your Sunday worship today having this conversation. I have a few other questions that we're going to talk about. What are some of the things we want to do during this shelter time? Instead of saying all the don'ts, like we're not going to prom, we're not um, going to that uh, NBA game because the sporting events have been canceled. Um, what do we want to accomplish? Um, what are those projects that all of a sudden, listen, I had 20 or so speaking keynote events in the next couple of weeks, all canceled. My calendar has not been this open in six years um, because I speak a lot and I do a lot of media and all of a sudden that's available to me, that time. Um, I don't know about you, but for us during the holidays, we tend to gather and stay kind of huddled more connecting as a family. We play board games and do puzzles and watch movies. And all of a sudden I had an awareness that this is an opportunity for our family to regroup, to reframe. It's a big, huge pause button. And wasn't our prophet um, inspired as he invited us to take our vitamins and to prepare for general conference that it was going to be like no other general conference? Man, is that prophetic. Um, and so if you haven't felt like you have prepared, um, specifically the women, I, I had the opportunity to host and produce uh, Women of Worth Wednesday here at High Five Live. I've been doing that for over two years and I love sharing messages. For those of you watching that may have never um, cat caught one of our Women of Worth messages, you may be home now. And I hope you'll join us on Wednesday. It will be me this week, but sometimes it's other guests or sometimes I'm interviewing. And so in addition to my work here with um, this amazing team at High Five Live with Women of Worth Wednesday, I also have the great honor and privilege to co-host an amazing Come Follow Me show called Real Talk Come Follow Me. I have a co-host, Scott Sorensen. He is a brilliant seminary teacher and he deals with depression and anxiety and he is very open about that. And those of you that know me have read my books, have listened to my CDs or followed me here on High Five Live or heard me speak, you know that uh, one of my big whys for my mission is suicide prevention and mental health awareness, specifically with my sister's uh, death by suicide that her anniversary of that passing was just this last week. So Scott and I, are very committed. There's a ton of Come Follow Me resources out there. Um, wonderful blogs, wonderful YouTube channels. This is when social media and um, technology is a blessing because it connects us in a way that allows us to have that social distancing that leaders are asking us to do so that we don't continue to um, pass this virus and there's some containment so that our, our health professionals are not overloaded with cases of um, COVID-19. 
And so you may have favorite resources. Maybe you've done no um, Come Follow Me in your home and now you're gonna have the opportunity to practice that. I would love for you to join Scott and I in Real Talk. Our, our messages are under 20 minutes unless you catch one of our Come Follow Me uh, Real Talk Friends episodes, which we've already done uh, Hank Smith and Tim Ballard, and we just taped a very special one with Susan Easton Black that's going to be wonderful for the restoration preparation our prophets asked us to do. I also have done a Women of uh, Invitation from President Nelson for women to study about the priesthood and that was that was an additional invitation from the prophet in October. And so if if you haven't uh, searched for resources, there's ton of resources resources out there. There's blogs, there's tools, there's online uh, opportunities just on the church's site that can support families. But my invitation is, regardless of what you do or you haven't done in the past, this is a pause. This is a reset. And I'm, I'm so grateful that we get to keep it real. Um, one of the whys for Scott and I in doing Come Follow Me uh, resources and a show, it takes a lot of prep and we work really hard at it. And we knew there were already a ton out there is that we wanted to have it be real for what is happening in our families. And this is what's happening. The scriptures prophesy that there will be pestilence and plagues and that there will be wars and rumors of wars. And that the hearts of men will fail them. And so Scott and I are very committed to making sure that our hearts stay strong. That we trust that Heavenly Father in His mercy. Um, our episode this week is about the allegory of the olive tree. And I love how um, Scott and I discussed that God is merciful and He is extending His arm of mercy to us. And, and, and in that allegory... He keeps going out to all the parts of the vineyard to dung and prune and, and graft in to strengthen. And I really feel like this experience that we are having as a global family, this COVID-19, this sheltering and hunkering down, this pause is an opportunity for us to learn and for us to draw closer to the spirit. And we're going to be anxious. We're going to get irritated. We're going to be frustrated. I know in the United States, there's a run on toilet paper. And I've seen lots of posts on social media about people that are stressed and they're anxious and they're not sure. There's other people that are saying, hey, we're blowing this all out of proportion. Wherever you stand on this, whether you're really anxious today or you're kind of dismissing this as conspiracy and we're making too big of a deal about it, I like to see everything that happens in my life as part of the curriculum. And, and so I would invite you today, no matter what you do, whether it's listening to a conference talk, whether it's doing as my, my friends in the Middle East have taught me, where your area may already have given you instruction on partaking in the sacrament. What a sacred and special opportunity to partake of the sacrament in your home with your family. If you ever have been sick or bedridden or or had situations in your life. I know I have where I've had um, long bouts of chemotherapy and I've had the sacrament brought to me. It's a sacred opportunity to really not just do it automatic. Sometimes we get into these habits. If you were able to attend the temple and then you got the announcement that the temples are closed, I'd invite you to set aside some temple time each week, whether that's you read an article or listen to a conference talk about the temple or you do some indexing. Right now, proxy work in the temple has been shut down. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this on Wednesday on my Women of Worth message. But in our family, we're going to discuss today a way in which we can still help temple work go forward. And one of those ways is family history and, and indexing. And um, I, I think we have such a gift of mercy here from God right now. And yes, we need to be careful. We need to have conversations about how to protect ourselves. I know for me with lupus, um, I stayed home this weekend and did not go to a wedding out of state um, because I'm immune sensitive. And um, that was a hard decision for me to make. It wasn't a long um, plane ride, but it was enough to where I knew I needed to, to hunker down. And it, the last 24 hours, I've been able to work on um, hearing the voice of the Lord more. So my invitation to you is, um, just as the Middle East saints have taught me, that church worship and Sunday worship 
um, can be in our homes and it can be a beautiful, wonderful experience. And it's okay that it's triggering and it's stressful. It's okay that we're learning. This is a learning process. So you're going to be practicing things. You're going to be discussing as a family what works. You're going to make decisions and then you're going to re focus on what worked this week and what didn't work. So just be patient. If you want to join Scott and I on Real Talk, we'd love to have you. We are on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. We actually have a Facebook group, but you can find us on the Siegel page and the Covenant page because Siegel and Covenant uh, produce our show. We'd love to have you join us. We try to really make it real and we discuss those topics that are affecting families, real families, addiction and and mental health issues and divorce and loneliness. And we try to pull those things out of the scriptures. Our messages we tend to make around 20 minutes. Um, if you haven't watched the Tim Ballard interview or the Hank Smith interview with our Real Talk friends, those are great. If you need a little bit of a break and you don't know what to do with your Sunday service, um, there are great resources. I know that we as a faith community are gonna be learning some things. So my last invitation is to consider let me look on my flip chart <laughs> and then we're gonna end oh 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 is where are you seeing faith where are you seeing faith um it's gonna be easy to see the fear and i would invite you to start a journal or a list somewhere these are flip charts that are sticky notes big huge sticky notes isn't that cool um, I'm going to invite our family today to start looking for the faith that they see. Maybe you're going to start to see where the Lord was whispering to you two weeks ago and you listened or you didn't listen. That's still seeing the faith. So my invitation to you is to see this as a big pause and a refocus. The non-essentials are going to be pushed out of your life and your calendar. And hopefully we'll, we'll see that this gathering time is renewing of our faith and our family relationships. Thank you for joining us here at High Five Life. We're going to have all the resources of faith-promoting stories every day. If you start to go into the fear, hop on this page, share it with your friends, um, because there is a lot out there that is upping our fear. And here on High Five Life, we have a library of faith-promoting stories that we would love for you to go back and watch and, and join us in the next few weeks. Um, thank you for joining me here. Um, I'd love to connect with you on Instagram, on um, Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you can find me. I have a strange name. It's pretty easy to find me. Um, if you just start typing it into Google, you usually can find my platforms. And thank you for joining us here on High Five Live. Happy Sabbath, if it's still your Sabbath. If you're done with your Sabbath, happy Monday. And um, let's post in here how how in, your, in the comments, snapshot of how your family or you as an individual, if you're single, um, how you have um, practiced worshiping on Sunday today. And we are going to get through this. We're going to learn some amazing things. There's great resources. And I see some people already posting what they're doing and the talks they're listening to and the resources that they found. So this is where we get to show up for each other. And I'm not, listen, I have not been in the faith headspace this whole time. Let me just be clear. I got my pom-pom earrings on and I'm all showered and I'm excited to be joining you. But I've had my own moments. Um, of panic as my calendar and rescheduling 20 speaking events and trying to see what needs my family had and canceling going to a wedding of my nephew that I really wanted to be at. It's not, I'm not trying to be Pollyanna. This is, this is where we get to grow in our faith. It doesn't mean we're not triggered and frustrated at times. So thank you for joining me. I love you. Uh, high five live team we love you and we're committed to sharing faith and would love to see you on real talk if you want to um, catch me there I'll tag it um, it wasn't tagging in as I went live so I'll go back and do that and thanks again so much